welcome to the second episode of the seventh season of the Ubuntu podcast. In this episode, we'll interview Mark Shuttleworth and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in our IRC channel. I'm Laura and joining me this week are Mark. Hello. Alan. Hello. And Tony. Good evening. So, what have you been doing, Tony? What? I've just been doing the Ubuntu podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the past winter for the past three months what have i been up to um i'll be doing lots of doctor who photos actually i've been taking photographs of tom baker Ooh. and colin baker and all um, the bakers all the both of the bakers <laughs> and uh mr Bun the baker's boy louise jameson um you know oh, really like yeah, you. yeah absolutely yeah and lala <laughs> ward um and dark eyes too which was with paul mcgann i didn't actually photograph paul but with uh, lots of other people in it it's out now you can buy that a big finish <laughs> that's been very exciting on the box do you, do you get royalties for that uh, no, oh. no, not not per sale, but please go and buy it anyway <laughs> and, uh, and make but it get, a big success. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling every time he sees it in the shop. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. well, that's it. I go along to the recording sessions and shoot for a bit and have some nice lunch and uh, go home again. Hobnob with the stars. Hobnob indeed. But yes, good it's fun. Not good enough for him anymore. Awesome. Well, no, just, just. What you about... think when you were a kid or on that TV show <laughs> with Michaela Strachan that you one day... That you can find on my YouTube account. <laughs> yes, that you'd ever... We'll have to link to that in the show notes we for will. those who haven't seen it. Let's uh, not. <laughs> every episode. It's up to about 500, 600 views. <laughs> no, I, did, I didn't think that that would ever happen. Even when I started out photography as a business, I didn't think I'd end up photographing Doctor Who people for money. <laughs> Tom um, Baker. Tom Baker, you know. Tom Baker. Yeah, it's great fun. Great fun. I love so, it do it every day if i could uh and what about you alan nothing three months nothing yeah no there is a blank row i just thought you were keeping it a surprise no i just couldn't think of anything he hasn't shaved yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah much pretty much keeping his face warm no, over actually, the winter months uh, actually i've been spending a lot of time working uh which has been um quite intense leading up to the release and phone stuff so yeah it's been mostly work 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 what did you get for christmas Oh, my life. I cannot remember for the life of me. <laughs> However, I will let you know that it's my birthday in two days' time. Oh, it is. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, I'll be next us? week what I got for my birthday, and I'll be able to remember that. <laughs> is it your birthday in two days' time? Last week. Last week. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. 52 now, is it? 42, the best age. <laughs> oh. Answers to the life, the universe, and everything. Exactly. Alan uh, Pope. Goodness. Mm. So, Mark... Uh, well, you might remember if you were listening last week that um, we t- talked a bit about the Amazon TV box, and Alan said that it was really it really useful to have one box under your TV which does video streaming and gaming and did everything else. Well, you did say that, um, and I thought that too. So I built one. Wow, you built oh. an Amazon. You built an Amazon. Well, I didn't build an Amazon built box. I built um, an Ubuntu box running Steam and XBMC and a few other bits and bobs. Um, as a sort of all-in-one media games console thing under my TV. Um, yeah, so that's quite fun. I've blogged quite a bit about the various stages I've gone through. I need to do a bit more. But yeah, it works really well. It's running Linux. It's Ubuntu. running It's running Ubuntu 12.04 and yeah, and it's running XBMC and it's running Steam and it's running Pipelight to, so I can watch Silverlight stuff and some clever hacks to make it a bit more seamless than having to run a browser like manually and go to the URL. Have you got a keyboard plugged into it that you try across the lounge? No, no, no. I have a, a small, uh, again, this is on my blog, I've, I've got like a small handheld um, keyboard and touchpad, which is um, a wireless, wireless. RF thing not right. bluetooth i tried a bluetooth one but then you have to get it so that it pairs when it boots and oh. that's a nightmare yeah do you have to ssh into it to change the channel no i can use my remote wow. keyboard to change the channel or i can use my xbmc remote app on my phone to change the channel Ooh, get you uh, yeah bunch of touch has an xbmc i just thought i'd say that. does it uh. well xbmc you just go to the web page ah. how about you laura uh, I've been using XMind, which is quite funky. Um, it's a, a mind mapping tool. Mind mapping tool. Yes, I'm not really that into good. mind mapping, but I'm using it for various different things. And it's probably the most flexible one that I've come across. And uh, But I was reading today that it's uh, the free one is completely open source. Um, and only the paid bits or some of them are proprietary. But it's just, I don't know, it just seems really neat the way it's been all put together and stuff. Uh, and... So while I was using that, I was also not using LibreOffice because it just kept crashing every time I saved today. So XMind, did you say it's called? Yes. Sounds like it's probably really old, is it? No, no, and it, it's all pretty. Oh. 
Uh, it's based on Eclipse, but you can't tell that unless you really recognise preferences boxes in Eclipse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what you've been doing for the last three months. Is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but Preference yeah. box spotting. No, yeah. no, it's it's based on Eclipse. It's a rich client of Eclipse. But um, no, it's pretty good. It's some guys in Hong Kong make it. And cool, cool. Neat. So we've got a, uh, our next segment, which is uh, an interview with Mark Shuttleworth. And uh, just to give you a little warning, there's one tiny F-bomb in the middle of there. So um, yeah, you might want to put headphones on. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's a, an s Little S thing in there as well, but no, who cares probably about a, those? Probably an A. Yeah. No, there's an there's a headphones A's. on for the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's an F. It takes precedence. <laughs> Did I hear a Q as well? C- consider yourself duly warned. <laughs> I think is the message. But it's a really Basi- interesting. Interview. Basically, we couldn't bleep it. So there yeah. You go. So uh, listen and enjoy. <laughs> So on the line we have Mark Shuttleworth, who really needs no introduction, uh, so he's not getting one. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions we asked uh, the community uh, to, to wade in with questions for Mark, so let's just pile straight into those. The first one came from uh, former Fridsland and Zoltan Tamas Aveja, I think I've got those names right, um, asking you, Mark, are you flattered or annoyed by today's announcement by Microsoft of universal Windows apps, which apparently let users buy once and run anywhere? Well, no, I think it's uh, brilliant, and I think it um, it validates the focus on convergence that we have in Ubuntu. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, life is all about having ideas and sharing ideas and leading, and the fact that we've been working towards this vision for four years, um, and to have it validated by one of the world's you know, greatest platform companies is very exciting. I think bringing that to the free software ecosystem first should be our priority. So do you uh, think that there's uh, there's any danger of it sort of stealing Ubuntu's thunder and um, people seeing it on Ubuntu and saying, oh, no, Windows already already came up with that? No, I mean, we're perfectly comfortable with a world that has Windows in it, right? We were all born into that world, and, uh, and Microsoft is now, you know, is, is, I think we can consider it one of the many interesting platform companies in the world. It's no longer the um, sort of uh, uh, um, overwhelming um, uh, and frankly abusive company that it was. I think it's it's now in a much healthier position. So we can compete and competition is interesting and fun and it's good to be respectful to the competition. Um, I think what's most important for us though is to rally our community around the vision and, and to say, look, Historically, the free software community made excuses for itself and complained about, you know, always being behind and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is now a sort of once in a lifetime opportunity for us to be right there at the beginning of a new era of personal computing. Um, I don't think we've seen the end of all of the disruptions, right? The, The mobile phone was not the last big disruption in personal computing. And our vision is to say, no, it goes all the way to, to having this sort of, um, your, your personal computing being something that's independent of the the form factor, right? The phone or the tablet or the or the glass or the the, the ring or the watch or the the personal computer, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, your personal computing is something that you'll carry around with you, and it will just express itself onto all of these form factors. And having a so, platform um, which can do that's just unique. We should we should all be working together to to making it a free one first. So, uh, in terms of Ubuntu's um, convergence strategy in the long term. Um, where do you see it at the moment? Is it sort of on track or is it behind or ahead of where you wanted it to be at this time? Um, I think it's come together really cleanly. You know, when we set out to to build this convergence thing, we really struggled to hire the best designers in London because they said it couldn't be done. Mm-hmm. It's a really, it's a phenomenal thing. You know, we sat down and said, we have the most op- you know incredible once in a lifetime opportunity for you to lead the future um, you know, in human interaction design. And the best guys, the, you know, the top guys said, nah, it can't be done. Uh, you know, it's a little bit like the, the early space race when the top pilots said you know, they had no interest in going to space because, you know, the, the, the spacecraft had no wings, right? So how could you fly? You weren't flying if you weren't in something that had wings. But, but what we were doing is something that turned out to be really important. And if you look now at, um, you know, how Unity spreads across phone, tablet, and PC. I think 
most people would agree it's much cleaner, much more elegant than than Windows 8 and that family of, of convergent devices. So I, you know, here we are in the position where we have a vision that other major players are starting to say that's the right vision. And we, we, it's all free software. And you know, it's damn good, right? It's beautiful. And we've got a phenomenal community forming around the apps, the convergent apps. I don't know if you're tracking um, that sort of hubbub, but I think it's, it's great. I think that uh, Alan's keeping up to date with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm keeping, I'm keeping <laughs> an eye on that. Yeah. Has an idea of where, where we stand over there. But, right. So what's your view, Alan? I think it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of surprised um, that, that we would get people who would want to contribute to this from the community. And I think I didn't quite see the vision that you did early on, and now I do. So... <laughs> Took the salary, though. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So where do you see the operating system landscape in sort of 10 years from now? Um, so, you know, convergence is a, a story that's deeper than personal computing. We're in, we're in a very interesting position to be able to make a platform which developers can use across um, – personal computing, all forms of personal computing across servers, all forms of servers, you know, big ones, virtual ones, micro servers, um, you know, the, you know, servers that sit in the attic and, and just tell you how hot your attic is. Um, and, and that's a really, really, that's taking this convergence story even deeper. Um, and I think over the next 10 years, that that's what will happen, that, um, free platforms, hopefully Ubuntu, if we lead it correctly and we you know, rally our community around that idea, the free platforms will just become ubiquitous and standard. And to, to, to make that happen, you know, in, in each form factor we have to, in each category of computing, we have to have an idea about what's really exciting, what's really important. I think if you look at cloud computing, we did that. You know, we looked at public clouds and we said, hey, how do we make this really wonderful for people? And Ubuntu is now wonderful on, on, on public clouds, on all of the public clouds. And developers love it. It's the platform that most people use on the public cloud. That's kind of amazing. And we need to do the same thing for personal computing. I think we've demonstrated credibly that we can lead that cleanly in, in the face of a lot of fairly intense sledging, right, from people who perhaps could better off be our allies. Um, and nonetheless, th there's a really beautiful result emerging there. And I think in each of these other areas of, of computing, um, like the Internet of Things and devices generally, I think we can do the same. And if we do that, then perhaps in 10 years' time, you know, it, it won't be surprising to people, you know, when they meet lots of other people who feel that this is a great way for them to interact, you know, with the digital world. So changing gears slightly, um, we had a question from Ingo Schaefer who asks, uh, looking back, where would Ubuntu be without some of the controversial nature of many of your blog posts? Do you think that helps or hinders us? Well, I, you know, there's two sides to that. I think sometimes, sometimes my emotion, passion does leak out. Um, and, you know, I could slap myself for that and do occasionally. I think also, though, that we're seeing a sort of a meme where it, it's become cool to turn anything into a controversy. This, this is a, that great old story about, you know, um, if, uh, if, if um, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a political figure or a leader, the joke has been told about many different people, right? And they're, they're in a rowing boat and, and a woman falls out of the rowing boat and is drowning and they, they grab that, you know, they jump out of the, the boat and lift that person up and walk over the water back to the ocean, to, 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 the, to the shore, um, carrying the person on the water. You know, the headline the next day in some newspapers would be that the president can't swim, right? <laughs> and, and you know, it sort of stuns me sometimes the extent to which, you know, we have a very shallow um, um, and vicious um, critique of what I think are sincere efforts to build a better free software stack or, or an alternative free software stack. Um, you know, the, the shallowness of that is very clear when you, when you say that the same people will critique me and us um, both ways. You know, if we, if we don't participate in something, then we're not contributing. And if we 
to participate in something, then somehow we're being obstreperous and not wanting to do it the same way as everybody else. And, uh, you know, I think when you have that level of, of political charge in something, it's kind of sad. It surprises me because it's not really why I got into free software. I thought I was getting into free software because I wanted to work with the nicest, brightest people in the planet, all of whom were decent people who had a vision that deserved my support. So and, given, uh, given that there's, uh, you know, constantly it seems all of this sort of flack being thrown at uh, Ubuntu and at Canonical, um, you know, whenever a, something's announced or a decision's made, if you, if, what, what is it that stops you just saying, you know what, I've, I'm really investing awful. my own, exactly, I'm investing <laughs> my own time and money in this, I'm going to go and do something where I don't get all of this rubbish for it? Um, you know, I think in life, as, as you spend time in life, you see things from different perspectives. And, and the dialogue for me internally on that is to start to realize that at the end of the day, this is not a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. Life is not a popularity contest. I'm only here for so many years. It's a stunningly short period of time. You know, given the lucky position I have in life, I'd like to live a thousand years because fuck it, I could make the most of that, right? Um, but I'm only going to be here a short period of time. So I kind of have to pick the things that are meaningful to me. And, you know, at least for the moment, I can see that the, the positive things that we do justify the engagement, even though I'm very sad at what I see as, uh, I don't know, the waste of a lot of intellect uh, out there. I think it also has to be said that, you know, sometimes we haven't communicated things brilliantly. So, so for example, uh, you know, it was a mistake for me to, to make Unity the default when we did and, you know, I know why I did it. The vision was absolutely clear. And, you know, we needed, it wasn't going to be good enough for us just to sit and consume platforms that weren't going, you know, anywhere, you know, that didn't have, you know, that vision, right? And, and I tried to get that vision injected into the existing free software communities and they, they were resistant to it. I think mainly because by then the competitive dynamic had started to kick in, right? But so just sitting around and, and trying to keep other people happy wasn't going to get us anywhere interesting, right? And so it was either, you know, quit um, or just lead it. And so having decided to lead it, you know, I then felt that, you know, we had the right to move forward fast. And I think with hindsight, it would have been better to pursue unity, but start, you know, with things that weren't controversial, you know, not start with the desktop and, and then build a community around that, until the vision became obvious to everybody is I think it's starting to become obvious now. So there's a life lesson learned, you know, just because things are clear to you doesn't mean that they're clear to everybody else and that people have a right to, to object to something they don't understand. Right. right. So fair enough. Lesson learned. I don't think that justifies nastiness towards Ubuntu or me now. Right. I have never claimed to be infallible. Um, uh, We've always worked very hard, as hard as could be expected, I think, to make sure that other visions of free software computing were easily accessible to people who wanted to benefit from the enormous amount of work that the Ubuntu team, both canonical and community, put into that platform, right? It's wonderful to me that other desktop environments get a bit of a free ride, you know? Yes, we get a, a good lift from Debian and other communities too, but still, it's a very unusual position that we take in, in supporting so many other visions of what's possible. And, and it's kind of sad to me that that doesn't get appreciated for what it really is, which yeah. is pretty amazing. Lightening the mood slightly, uh, Mark Frazier asks us a vital question via Emacs. Vim. Oh, <laughs> good answer. Okay. None, okay. Of, none of the above. And uh, Pat Dorush asks, is Ubuntu going to be seen in stores like Future Shop and Best Buy like you can see other Linux laptops like Chromebooks? Yes. I, I mean, I think credibly around the world, there are probably several thousand stores now where you'll find Ubuntu on shelves. Um, I think the, the transition to a mobile world is the, the critical one. You know, if we, if we don't make that, um, if we don't make that trans transition, um, smoothly, then we don't really have a right to stake a claim in the future of personal computing, right? So I think that the, the really crucial stuff is, you know, are we able to build um, industry momentum around Ubuntu as a, 
as a phone and tablet platform into into these other new fields of personal computing. Um, and if so, then you know the PC you know, will naturally be a force there. If not, then we won't. On uh, we we've seen um, some changes in direction recently with uh, changes to way uh, Amazon Search is handled, um, Ubuntu One file sync shutting down. Does this signify a shift away from online services for the Ubuntu desktop experience? No. So um, let's deal with of the Ubuntu One. You know, the, the original vision, the, the thing that the economic argument that I had in my head to say I could do Ubuntu as a free platform, give it away, was Dropbox. And, um, you know, we had the team and we had the funding and we had the vision and it, it got done badly. And that's just that, you know. So in life, you have ideas. They can be the right ideas, but there are no prizes for having the ideas, you know. There are people out there who think that having ideas is in itself wonderful. But actually, it's about how you deliver that. And I think, you know, my hope is that the team responsible internalizes that in a mature way and says, okay, so sometimes we get the chance. And if we screw around and don't do a good quality job of it, we lose. So we lost, you know. That, that, that opportunity passed us by and we... we we didn't deliver on it. So that's that. You shut it down. Um, the Amazon decision is a different one. Um, you know, I sincerely believe that what people want is the ability to instantly connect to all the stuff that's out there. And Amazon is just one example of, of all the stuff that's out there that people use every day, right? And I don't see the point in creating artificial barriers between what people want and their ability to get it, right? It doesn't matter if you have fire brands out there saying that that's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. In fact, it's what people want. And we have fairly good evidence that that's the case. You know, just like, just like you're seeing, you know, Microsoft adopting a conversion story, you know, today or signaling publicly today that they'll converge all of their apps. You know, we see lots, everyone else in the industry is getting to where we already are. Uh, there is an execution issue there and that the current experience is just not good enough, right? And if you look at the scopes that are showing up in the developer builds for the phone, you'll see for the first time a dash that I can be proud of. That's the dash that I wanted to deliver early on. We just haven't, we had just haven't done it properly. Uh, so the decision was if we can't deliver a great experience of the vision, then it's better not to kind of have all of the controversy associated with it. But that doesn't remove the obligation for us to get that vision right. right. You know? mm. I'm not afraid of controversy. If 99% of people will, will, will be happily using a dash that has you know, Amazon in it, and that's good for us and good for Amazon and good for the users, you know, then the other 1% have self-selected themselves into a different packet, and that's fine. We... As we said earlier, we, have, we invest quite a lot in supporting them on other environments. I don't think there's a need for them to be nasty about our desire to make something wonderful. And that something wonderful may include the ability to reach out and grab information from anywhere, including commercial stores. Okay. And I think that's straightforward. Um, okay. And finally, because we're coming to the end of our time, uh, what single event in the history of the Ubuntu project has made you the most proud? Oh, wow. Is it being on the Ubuntu podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I think it was when we had some really thorny issues recently and we had a community council that sort of grabbed it by the horns themselves and, and, and grappled with the issue and, and, and did, I thought, a really credible job of pulling the various arguments out into the open and taking positions. Uh, and I loved that. And, uh, you know, I, at the time I was like running around the world like a blue assed fly and I cared about this, but I also, you know, was exhausted personally from having to shoulder, you know, everything and having a community council that said, actually, you know what, these are our values. Let's look at what's going on. This is not in content, you know, actually in contention with our values and controversy be damned. And these are not guys who work for canonical necessarily. Right. And I thought that that gave me a sense that we've done something pretty special. Um, there, this is like people say, what was the best bit about going to space? You know, and there's so many things. Um, in this case, you know, the first time we shipped on a PC, the first time we actually had the thing installed on a phone, um, the first time we saw that 
you know, the work that we've done on cloud was really being noticed by developers. All of these things have been sort of moments of pride. Um, hey, getting GNOME Shell redesigned to look just like Unity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think, where we should leave it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the 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 you know validation is validation right leadership is yeah. leadership you're not going to be popular for it all the time especially not by the other guys <laughs> well thanks for taking the time to talk to us today mark it's been great and mm. uh, very insightful and uh, as always we appreciate you taking thank the time you for on. thank you for your energy and humor <laughs> <laughs> thanks mark excellent talk to you cheers, thanks mark. Very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye, bye. bye 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 Now, for the first time this year, it's time for some command line love. <laughs> <laughs> and this week's command line love is courtesy of CLI Magic on Twitter, um, who post all sorts of stuff like this. So, uh, is that I'd... our resource for, <laughs> for command line loves now? Is it? <laughs> yes. Um, so, this one is uh, a tool called Reptyr, uh, R E P T Y R, um, which lets you detach a process which is running on another. A virtual terminal instance and attach it to the current one. So, for example, say you're SSH'd into um, a server and you've run a command which you need to leave running and log off, but you forgot to run the screen, as you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what you can do All with time. what you can do with Reptor is uh, log in into a separate SSH session into the same server, run the screen, then run Reptor and the PID of the process which is running in your first SSH session, and it will detach it from the first SSH session and stick it into your screen session. That's and awesome. then you can close screen and log out of both sessions, and it will keep running. Uh, how long has this existed? It's well, it existed for quite a while. This wow. isn't the first time I'd heard of it. How did I not know about this? Sounds for exciting. For years, I've always like you know started some long-running process at work and then thought, oh, I want to take my laptop home, but I can't, yeah. and end up having to leave my laptop at work <laughs> <laughs> because it's SSH in to lock it to the desk and go home. <laughs> And just, you know, let it finish because it's part way through. Yeah, that's brilliant. Mm, that is a very, very useful tip. Yes. Well, thank you, CLI Magic. And also, if anyone else has any command line loves they want to send us, then do so. Podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. <laughs> It's time for your feedback, and we have been inundated, I think it is fair to say, with an email while you've been, uh, while we've been <laughs> off the air. Um, Read it slowly. <laughs> you've got seven minutes to pad. <laughs> Pete and Gary from the band Migrant Worker have written in to say that we'd like to put ourselves forward for consideration for a play on your podcast. To get an idea of what we sound like, you can listen to a track from our new album, The Super Now. Thanks, um, Pete and Gary. Uh, I did try to listen to the thing, but it didn't work on my browser, so... <laughs> Um, oh, okay. I was I was all set ready for you to yeah, play. I thought you could play that soundboard. There. We could really do with a four-minute music track right now to pad this section out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Are they open source music? I don't think so. I think we should forward this it's on. Completely to Completely uh, irrelevant to our podcast. Uh, well, yeah, it's nice to get. We we welcome all feedback, Laura. <laughs> yes, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> All of it. All of it. Uh, we should forward this on to uh, Dave Lee at the Bugcast. Because, yeah. Because uh, he plays music on his podcast. And we don't. Yes. Well, unless it's from the 1920s. Although, if you happen to tune into our live stream on a Friday night, you will hear the Bugcast because he uses our live stream. Yep. Does he? Uh, yes, yeah, he does. We've come a cropper of that one before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we started recording on a Friday once and he was wanting to use it and yeah. we were recording. Whoops. Uh, yeah, coordination, great. Get uh, off our server. More feedback. Uh, Simon Maguire has emailed to ask about volunteering for Og Camp. Uh, but Ooh. we've got uh, no news yet on any dates or even if it's happening this year. No. It's no that's not no to say it is. That's is not to good say it news isn't. Yes. For everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No news is an absence of facts. <laughs> Has it even been talked about yet? Nope. This is oh. the first time I've spoken about it this year. Right. That's what I thought. But we don't organise it anymore. It's it's the community that organise it. So yeah. spontaneously uh, by themselves. Well, yeah. mostly, you know, we say to them, Let's... <laughs> says the man who hasn't been organising it for the past two years. Yeah. It happens spontaneously by itself. Does it? <laughs> Thanks a lot. No, Les does it all. We know that. <laughs> well, that's, that's what true. I was implying. Is that they do it. Yeah, yeah. Get on with it. Yeah, community. 
I don't know. Dan Dan likes to have alternate years on and off. So if he's not doing it this year, who is? Well, this may well be the problem. The community. The community, the answer to all of our problems. <laughs> Laura. Um, Leon Marinkovitz has asked, could you help me with one of your tips? And it's the command line loves from last year. Mm. I've tried over and over, but I can't seem to get this command line love to work properly. It's the label for a command in terminal. So it was some very long and complex command, hash label. Yeah, Just looking right. at that, that might be our formatting, but I thought there wasn't a space between hash and label. It doesn't actually matter. See, what... what I was just trying to debug that on the yeah. fly then. The, 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 problem work, that, the problem that he's had here is is what, what this does is it, you basically put hash and then a label to remember your really long command. Yeah. And because hash starts a comment, that bit doesn't get run. It just gets stuck into history and you can then search history right. for that hash label. Mm -hmm. But if you, saw, if you type, for instance history pipe it into grep and then put hash label then it treats it che treats hash label as a comment <laughs> so it doesn't search for it so i think that's probably what he's done and oh. therefore not got any results so, oh, so when he does the search miss out the hash miss and out just the hash the label. or if you put it in quotes it doesn't treat it as a comment right yeah what it what it isn't is a way of aliasing a command to a shorter command no it is just a way of, of tagging something useful in your history yeah. exactly so you can just do like control r type the the tech you don't even have to yes. type the history just you control r and type the whatever the tag was without yes. the hash and you'll find it right. yeah and then you can edit it that's the idea because with alias it will run exactly the same thing but doing this you get the whole command which you can then change your parameter or something okay sweet cool hope that works out well leon uh yeah mark oh that's me um sam hewitt on google plus said i do enjoy the ubuntu podcast but the uneven waves <laughs> but... of the logo do bug me ever so slightly just made a slight adjustment to the top one. Uneven yeah. waves of the oh, logo. the, the, you know the, the circle and the waves yeah, on then, our logo. They're, they're not not slightly even. not perfectly round. Yeah, I'm surprised we've got away with it with, for this long. Really, mm. that is the biggest problem I can point out with this podcast. <laughs> 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 well, given for the last three months we've not been doing anything. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> pretty much the biggest thing you can spot is the, the, the logo. thing on the website. Yeah. So did Sam say he's made the slight adjustment? For he did us. do a yeah the. I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, in the show notes. But there's We're not a... going to update the website. Why don't you just update the website? <laughs> well, no. Just to, I was going to point out that <laughs> that's where he's put it because because he's put a, couple, a, a PNG and I think we probably yeah. want an SVG so we can update all of the. Uh, do you remember how much yeah, hassle it was last time we changed our logo? No, it was fantastic, and I welcome uh, Sam's input. Well, yes, I mean, given that the whole design and the logo was done by a listener, uh, you know, in his own time just because he felt like it. Yeah, yeah. But you have to change the, the Google Plus page, the Twitter account, the you album You have art. to change the Google Plus page. Well, I had to change the website, to be fair. And but it was worth it. But the website's got version control, so it's fine. Just give it Alan to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I'll break it. This uh, Git thing is fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> Yeah, I have broken our website once or twice. Uh, thank you, Sam. And I will get in contact and see if we can get an SVG and uh, fix the OCD issues with our website uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Indeed. The Ubuntu Podcast welcomes careful listeners. The Ubuntu Podcast needs you. Yes, you. If there's something you think we should talk about or someone we should talk to, tweet at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. And remember, if we don't hear from you, we might not have enough content. And that can only mean one thing, more quizzes. Send your hate mail to us about those uh, <laughs> skits that Tony does, and maybe he'll make some That's more. That's Tony at tonywhitmore.co.uk. <laughs> 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 Thanks, dude. <laughs> Mark at some stupidly long domain name dot com. Ah, uh, that's why I chose it. <laughs> so the next live show will be on Wednesday, the sixteenth of April at half past eight in the evening, and that's UK time. Yep. Whatever that means. Yeah. Stuff you all with your time zones. It's eight thirty UK time. Figure it out yourself. <laughs> We're not the Ubuntu UK podcast. We have global uh, listenership. Oh yeah. BST. Please listen. 1930 UTC. No. Yeah. Not in you. Well, all right. No, that's yeah. right. Well, we're not. Yeah, but okay. other people can use it as a reference 2030 point. 2030 BST. I thought the whole point of not having this conversation <laughs> was so as not to confuse everyone and me. Right. Well, we're here. 
<laughs> Let's hope we're here next time. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.